In this video, I'm going to answer your questions about behaviors that can impact MS. Don't turn away, because that starts right now. Hey! Howdy! Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I started this YouTube channel to help my own MS clinic patients learn between visits, and it's my hope that through these videos, I can help you learn too. It's the tail end of December, and here in Ohio, it's actually kind of nice outside. So before it starts to snow again, I wanted to sneak out and record a video in my backyard. I was recently asked some outstanding questions about behaviors that could impact MS. And so I thought, what the hey, hey, let's answer them in this video. Let's jump in. Laura Kay asks, any thoughts on secondhand smoke from being around people who vape? Excellent and timely question. Now, by way of review, we know that as it relates to an analog cigarette, a cigarette filled of tobacco that you light on fire and then suck in the smoke, that's not just bad for your heart and lungs and for cancer risk, it actually increases the risk to develop MS and it actually speeds up MS if you have it. Those are things that we know to be true. We also know that exposure to secondhand smoke is bad for people with MS, and that also can create a pro-inflammatory situation which can rev up their disease. Now, vaping is a new technology. Uh, theoretically, it's not combusting something, uh, and you're still breathing in these vapors. In this past year, we learned a lot about the, the, the medical concerns of vaping. It's not as benign as we once thought. Now, I don't think there's data yet teaching us about the risks of secondhand uh, vape. And I simply would say that we want to use caution. Um, I'm not suggesting that you should run to the other side of the room when someone pulls out their vape pen, but I don't think we know the answer. And in the absence of knowing, I think that we have to use common sense. I personally don't want you to do anything which could potentially worsen your disease. And so I think that as we move forward with research, we're going to learn. And in the interim, I think that we should use caution. Laura, that was an excellent question. Thank you for asking it. MS in the 11th percentile says, Dr. B, how does owning a dog affect MS patients? Well, MS in the 11th percentile, as, as you know, and as many of the folks that follow me on this channel know, I'm in love with my dog, River. And I think having a pet, in my opinion, having a dog in specific is revolutionary for how it helps folks with MS. I did an entire video on why I think dogs are awesome, and I'll throw a link up above. And so if you're impacted by MS and you haven't checked that video out yet, please take a look. But there are innumerate reasons why dogs help folks, and I'll just list a few today. Number one, a dog helps you maintain a schedule. They have to go out and go potty, otherwise they'll go in the house. You have to feed them. There's things that create a schedule by simply having a pet and taking care of the pet. Number two, Unconditional love. When you come home from a hard day, your dog is so excited to see you. It's the best thing that's happened to them all day. And you can't really put a price tag on that affection. Uh, number three, exercise. When you have to get up and walk the dog, when you have to get up and even let the dog outside, it's getting you moving. Going outside and throwing the ball with the dog isn't just good for the dog, it's good for you too. There's three quick ones, and if you want to hear many, many more, check out that video. But the bottom line is, it's my opinion that every person with MS would benefit from having a doggy at home. Melissa Booth asks, does losing weight, I'm 70 pounds overweight, help with SPMS if you're already having mobility issues? And the answer, Melissa, is heck yes, it makes a really, really big difference. And it has everything to do with physics, so think about it. If you have a weak left leg, and putting weight on that leg while walking is hard, and that leg tends to get fatigued when you exercise or move forward. If you're carrying 70 extra pounds, or even seven extra pounds, that's 70 or seven extra pounds on that weak leg. So the physics of it is making things harder. However, if you lose the 70 pounds, or if you even lose seven pounds, you now have lightened the load on that weak leg. The result is that you'll be able to travel farther. So losing weight and the physics involved in losing weight is super duper helpful and can help not just with mobility, but with multiple areas in the setting of MS. I am a big proponent. If you are a bit overweight and you're having difficulties in thinking about how to approach it, this is an excellent topic to discuss with your neurologist or with your primary care doctor. We want to help you in your quest of shedding pounds. Awesome question. Blonde Benz asks, 
Can poor diet and poor sleep patterns exacerbate MS symptoms? Example, mobility issues, heat tolerance issues, spasticity. And the answer is 100% yes. It's terribly relevant that if you get poor sleep, the next day you're not gonna function as well. And if you are chronically sleep deprived, you're not gonna fare very well. There are myriad reasons why people with MS need quality and good quantities of sleep. I actually have several videos on this topic, so I'll, I'll link one up above in case you want to check that out. The same thing is true with a poor diet. I can tell you that anecdotally, many, many of my patients, when they embrace clean eating and when they embrace good sleep hygiene, their lives improve. It's free to do both and it's worthwhile to explore. So if you're listening to this video at the beginning of 2020, use it as a call to action. Blonde Ben's excellent question. Thank you for asking. My name's Aaron Boster and thank you for learning about MS with me. If you're impacted by MS and you wanna up your game, check out that video right there. YouTube Analytics thinks that you would love this video right there. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. Just click that circle with my face on it. Go ahead, click my face. Until my next video or my next live stream, or the next time I see you in clinic, this is Aaron Boster saying take care.